So it depends on the three that are being chosen. We agree? First, second, and third order matters, right? We have permutation. If I said you guys get to go, I'm picking three of you to go on a trip, okay? You all get to go to Edmonton. I know, riveting. So, one, two, three, does it matter if you're picked first, second, or third, and you're going to Edmonton? No. Cool. So it'd be a combination, right? So what I would do, instead of, you know how we've been using the P for permutation? We go 6P6 when it was 6 factorial. We would do 21 C, because it's a combination, three, choosing three of you, okay? Now, how could I change that? Okay, I'm picking three of you to go on a trip. Ready? The first person gets to go to Hawaii. The second person picked still gets to go to Edmonton, because it's riveting. And the third person gets an all-expense-paid trip to Walmart in Ocean. Okay? Now, some people really like Walmart. They maybe choose it over Edmonton. I would, maybe, possibly. I don't really like Walmart, but... I mean, I love Walmart. I'm recording. Walmart's great. I'm not working for Walmart. Why do I feel bad cutting down Walmart? I, don't know. I digress. Okay, anyways. So, will the order matter in which you were picked? Yeah, I want to get picked first. I want to go to Hawaii. I will accept the other two, but I would not be like a glowing fan of it. So, instead of going 21C3 this time, which is a button that's very close to the P button, like on the calculator, um, I would go 21 p3 in this instance because the order matters okay so what you need to decide is the small amount the small subgroup you're picking if it makes a difference if you're picked first second third fourth fifth whatever it may be then it's permutation but if the order does not matter it's a combination so where that always happens and people get confused is um if we're picking, like, say we're going on a trip and I'm picking the principals from the principals and the teachers from the teachers and the students from the students, does order matter? If I'm picking principals from principals? No. Because if I'm picking principals from principals, they're not getting a specific job. Their job is to be a principal, right? However, if I took this group and I said, okay, one of you is going to be president, one of you is going to be vice president, one of you is going to be secretary, does the order matter? You have different jobs? Yes. Then it matters. If this is the weirdest thing. If I took this class and I said, the first person I pick gets to be the principal of the school, the second person I pick gets to be the vice principal, and the third person I pick gets to be just a good old student, but you get to rule the world, like Pinky and the Brave. Uh, would the order matter? Yes, but we're not going to go to a group and be like, principal, student, like, it's not even real world things, right? So what you need to remember is, if you're ever choosing something from itself, it's going to be a combination. So for example, if I go to a hockey team, and I choose two defense from the six defense, two forwards from the six forward, two wingers from the six, whatever. You know what I mean? If I'm choosing them from that group, that's a combination because the order doesn't matter. I'm choosing defense from defense, forwards from forwards. Sometimes they seem drivers from drivers and irons from irons in, in, um, in golf, like stuff like that. So if you're choosing it from the actual item and it's the same type of item, like principals from principals, girls from girls, boys from boys, students from students, teachers from teachers, it's always a combination. Okay? So we're going to look up here. Oh, and the moment you do this, what is that? It's a permutation. You're giving it order. You're putting something in this blank, then something here, and something here. You're making, like, I can visibly see the difference. Right? So it's permutation. So some people will say, I know it's a combination, and then they start drawing blanks. I'm like, if you know it's a combination, do not draw blanks. That, that permutation, like, it's not going to work. You're going to get the wrong answer. Because yes, you know it's a combination, you are correct, but you're doing a permutation way of, of mapping. Okay, so combination is a selection of elements in which the order of the selection is not taken into account. That's huge. A committee of nine people, so that's, so 21 here, I have nine right? And I'm choosing three of them to be president, vice president, secretary. Permutation or combination? It's permutation because I gave them jobs, different jobs. If I gave them all the same job, it'd be a combination, correct? So this one's a permutation, which means order matters, right? And I would do this one, 9, P3. Type that in your calculator. 9P3.
What do we get? So there's 504 different ways from nine people I could pick a different president, vice president, okay? Now the next one says, I have a committee of nine people. Nothing changed. Now I choose three people to form a three-person subcommittee. Did I get them jobs? If I pick them first, second, or third, is it any different? Or do they just get to be on the subcommittee? It's no different. It's that second number, the R. Like, you know, it's NPR and NCR, like on the formula sheet? This thing here? It's that second number that it matters. So if I'm choosing three out of nine, the three, does it make any difference if you're picked first, second, or third? In this case, three-person subcommittee, you're on the committee or you're not. So this one is a combination, and it would be 9C3, which is how many? It's way less. Why? Order doesn't what? Order doesn't matter. So I pick those three. If I take them and flip them, then this, then that, it, it doesn't mean anything. They're just all good to be in the part of the thing, right? So uh, it takes away all those cases where order matters, which substantially drops it down. Now, if I read the formula, the number of combinations and elements taken R at a time is NCR. Now, all it is, it's just the NPR formula divided by R factorial. Because the NPR formula, if I do the P one, it doesn't have this. That's the NPR formula. So all we're doing is we're adding this R factorial. When have we added extra factorials to the bottom of situation? We just did it yesterday. When there's repeats. Because it gets rid of all the cases where they're actually the same thing, correct? So we're dividing by R factorial. We're dividing the permutation, the one where order matters, by R factorial because it's getting rid of all the cases where the order actually doesn't matter. That's all it is. It's the per permutation formula getting rid of all the cases where it, there's no difference. Okay? So, the NCR key on a calculator can be used to evaluate combinations. The other thing is, and it's written on your formula sheet, it says NCR equals NR. So if I said 9C3, that was my answer to the last one, I could have wrote it like this. It is the same thing. Then we're going to flip over. Wait a second. 10C4 equals 10C6? Type in your calculator. Go 10C4. And then type in 10C6. See if it's a true statement. Are they the same? What answer did you get? They both equal 210. Weird. Do this for me. Go 10P4 and 10P6. What's 10P4? Five thousand forty. What's uh, is that? Ten P four. What's ten P six? So these aren't the same, right? We can't use that, but we can for C's. Why? Well, we're going to show it with the formula. So off to the side here. I'm just going to write the formula out. N C R equals N factorial over N minus R factorial. R factorial, which is right on your formula sheet. So, I'm going to do 10C4 first. So this is my N, this is my R. Do you guys want to close the windows, please? Thank you. So, 
We're going to put 10 for all of the N's and 4 for all of the R's. So I'm going to go 10 factorial over 10 minus 4 factorial, 4 factorial, which is actually 10 factorial over 6 factorial, 4 factorial. And I'm not going to do an answer, I'm just going to show you that fraction. So it's 10 factorial over 6 factorial, 4 factorial. I'm not doing an answer, just keep it there, because the answer is 210, we already have it above. Then I'm going to do 10C6 and see why the heck they're the same. So now this is my N and this is my R. So I'm going to get 10 factorial over 10 minus 6 factorial, 6 factorial. So then I get 10 factorial over 10 minus 6, which is 4 factorial, 6 factorial. Does 6 factorial times 4 factorial make a difference compared to 4 factorial times 6 factorial? No, they're the same thing. It only works with C's because C has that extra R factorial on the bottom. So, I can, I can only do this when they have a common difference. So do you see what's the difference between 10 and 4? What's the difference between 10 and 4? 6. What's the difference between 10 and 6? So the answer we had to the previous one was 9C3. True statement? What else could I write? 9C what? 6. It's just what's the difference, right? 9 minus 3 is 6. So if I gave you 20C12, that would equal 20 C what? 8. It's just the difference between 12, 20 and 12. And I could write them like this because it's a C. Only C's have this. Oops. Only C's have this. I don't know why this thing's not writing over here. P's don't have this bracket option. But like I said, it's on your formula sheet. So if you see a weird bracket and you're like, what? I don't remember what that's about. It literally shows you here, right? Okay, does that make sense? Only with C's, the common difference actually is the same. P's it didn't. See, this was 10 P4, 10 P6, totally different answers. You can't use a cookie. So, example one. We have a student must sign sign three different books out of the library. So we're signing three different books out. Thanks, board. My, my goodness. So we're signing three different books out of the library to read for her English class. Okay, going to the library and taking out three books. That's all that's happening. She has always returned her books on time, so she's allowed to take all three books out at once. How many different ways can she sign out the books? It's not rocket science. She has three books. She gets to take them all out at once. How many ways can she do that? Hello, Miss Librarian. Here are my three books. And she'll be like, okay. Hands them back. You put them in your backpack. Put your backpack on your back. You walk out. How many ways can that happen? One. You literally walk in, you do it, you walk out. Correct? Why? Because the order in which you hand her the books doesn't matter. You get to take all of them with you, right? So I have 3, C, 3, which is actually 1. Because the order doesn't matter. I go in with my 3, I take out all 3. Okay? Now here we have the infamous student who's not in good standing. Another student must sign three different books out of the library to read for her English class. She is in bad standing with the library and can only take one book out at once. How many different ways can she sign out the books? So does the order matter? Yeah, it does because you're going to sign out a different book each time, right? So I could do this. Well, this is book signing one. This is the first time I go in, number one. Then and, then I go in month number two or whatever this is. 
She sewed it once. And then the third time she goes in to take out a book, right? How many book options does she have for the first time she goes in? Three. She takes out a book. Is she going to take out the same book again? Like return it and be like, excuse me, Miss Library, could you grab it back out of the bin and then take it out again? But no. So then we would have two and then we would have one. Ugh, try to press that again. 10C3, sort of doesn't matter. It's the same as 10C7. Doesn't they get to go on different trips? So 10P3. Could I put 10P7? No. 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 Very good. 